Heavenly Father be with me. Let's do this. <laughs> Hi guys, it's your girl Alana Monet, and today, welcome to my kitchen. We're gonna be making three hearty vegetarian meals that you can eat over the holidays. Don't forget to like and comment, and if you guys are already a part of the Baby Angel community, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you guys will catch more videos. Personally, I know the struggles of being a vegetarian during the holidays, especially if you have a carnivore family. I'm not kidding, the last time I went home for Christmas, my family handed me three bags of lettuce and some salad dressing and said, here, eat. So. Yeah, I'm gonna make a video of what you can cook your vegetarian family member and or slash what you can make yourself for the holidays so that you don't starve when you're in Texas. I mean, with your family. Today, I'm gonna be making you guys three of my favorite holiday meals that are all vegetarian, but you're more than welcome to add me if you would like. First, I'm gonna be making you guys this like, impossible meat mashed potato potato thing that I made. I have no idea what it's called. A spinach Christmas tree, and I'll also be making you guys an impossible meat Wellington. All right, so we're gonna start out with the impossible meat potato thing. Please help me name this in the comment section. You're gonna need about six to eight russet potatoes, some parsley, one small onion, eight ounces of impossible meat, 18 small balls of mozzarella and half a cup of mozzarella, seasonal salt, olive oil, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, garlic alfredo sauce, and salt. Start out by giving your potatoes a good rinsing and then go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Grease a pan and just go ahead and throw your potatoes on it, a dash of olive oil and a little bit of salt and pop those bad boys in the oven. You're going to leave them in there for about 45 minutes to an hour. Next you're going to go ahead and make your meatballs. To your one pound of impossible meat, go ahead and add some onions, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, seasonal. All the seasoning should be in there and then mix. You want to do about as much as you'd like for a burger. After that, go ahead and split that up into 14 pieces. Depending on how many potatoes you have, you just want to have uh, at least two per potato. Then go ahead and throw in your mozzarella balls and cover them up in the impossible meat so that you cannot see them anymore. They are nice and hidden and tucked away. And then repeat that for every single ball. pull the potatoes out of the oven and allow them to cool then just give them a cut in half I say to cool them because this is really important next you're gonna go ahead and scoop the insides out and turn them into mashed potatoes and you don't want your hands to burn in the mashed potatoes just go ahead and add a little bit of parsley and some salt and then mash them down I decided to go ahead and add a little butter because I just wanted a more creamy consistency but that's a totally optional Next, you're gonna go ahead and grease a pan, and in that grease pan, you will add your mashed potato mixture. Go ahead and flatten it and create almost like a mashed potato bed in the bottom of this pan. After you've created your bed of mashed potatoes, go ahead and take your mozzarella-filled meatballs and put them inside of the potato skins. Then take those potato skins and place them on top of the mashed potatoes. You're gonna do that for every potato, and it should come out a little something like this. You can clearly arrange them however you like, <laughs> but mine came out kind of cool. Then just smother all of that in all of the garlic alfredo sauce. It's the best time of year. And then add a little mozzarella cheese on top, and we're gonna go toss this bad boy in the oven. Do as I say, not as I do. Make sure to wear gloves. Also a pro tip, the first time I made this, it kind of overflowed into my oven, so I highly recommend putting some tinfoil down on top of your rack and then placing it into the oven. Then you're going to let that bake for about 50 minutes and it should look something like this. I'm just gonna do this with the big spoon because the big spoon's already in the room. This is so hot right now, I can literally see the smoke. Can you see the smoke coming off of it? I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I low-key let it cool too long. So you guys can't really see the drip, but you know what I do? I'm just gonna. Oh, yes. And the mozzarella in the middle. Oh, yes. Presentation-wise, before I let it cool, I would definitely have given it a 10. It's very, very pretty, super bubbly, all that good stuff. Sorry I didn't film it while it was hot. My bad. Flavor-wise, I'm gonna give me a nine and a half this time around. Only because I think I got scared of overfilling it and I didn't do like as much as I did the last time with it, you know what I mean? The Impossible Meat, super flavorful, cooked all the way through. Potatoes, amazing. Actually, it might give me a ton of flavor, low key. Mm-hmm. That's magically delicious. Next, we've got what I like to call O oh, spinach tree. 
You're going to need two pizza crust rolls, two cloves of minced garlic, half a cup of mozzarella, two tablespoons of butter, about 10 to 12 ounces of baby spinach, a half a cup of cheddar, a half teaspoon of garlic salt, eight ounces of cream cheese, a half a cup of grated parmesan, one fourth teaspoon of pepper, one fourth teaspoon of chili powder, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, half teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and salt to taste. And then you're just going to... Muscle stop! This scares me every time. Go ahead and open up your pizza rolls and get them out and flat on your board. Then cut your pizza dough into one big triangle, almost like an upside down pizza, and remove it from the excess dough. Then you're gonna do it again with a second pizza roll, and with that excess dough, go ahead and cut your star or any decorations you might like to add to the tree. I mean, my star kind of came out looking like Patrick Star. But like, as long as it's a star, right? I feel like, it's a star, that's a star. Next, finally chop your baby spinach. Pro tip, make sure you curl your fingers under so you don't chop them off. Then toss that all into a bowl alongside the cream cheese and blend that together. Throw in about two cloves worth of minced garlic, all of your seasonings, and blend them together until it's smooth. Once that's been blended together nicely, you're gonna take about a half a cup of Parmesan and toss that in, as well as a half a cup of cheddar cheese. After the cheeses have been thoroughly mixed in, go ahead and place your spinach dip on top of your Christmas tree dough and smear it out as thin as possible. Honestly, I made mine a little too thick. I could have put less in, so I would recommend doing that. Then take your half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese and pop that on top and cover it with the other piece of dough. Cut both sides evenly in order to make that Christmas tree shape. Then you're just going to twist and twist and twist, making sure that you lean it upward towards yourself. Transfer your newly twisted tree to a greased baking sheet and then pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 22 minutes. And don't forget your star! Once it comes out of the oven, you're going to go ahead and put the butter on top and just grease the entire thing. Cover the tree in a little Parmesan snow and then let it go. Let's give this Christmas tree a try! Okay, Cap, that's good. <laughs> Just realized Big Bang Theory was playing in the background the whole time. Well, I'm not mad at an excuse to eat more of it. Attractiveness level wise, I'm gonna give myself an 8.5, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, not 8.5. 8 out of 10. Uh, just because I did low-key leave it in just slightly too long because I got distracted making the, the um, potato thing. I feel like the twists just aren't defined enough and I wish they were a little bit more defined. But now that I know how to make it, I think I could definitely do it better the next time. But it does look like a Christmas tree and it's got a star. Like the vibes are here. You know what I mean? So, 8 out of 10. And then flavor-wise, 10 out of 10. 12 out of 10. This is so good. This is why I keep eating it. This is dangerous. It's almost like bougier Domino's bread. Like, Domino's bread taken to the gourmet levels of like, the good lord, you know? It's Christmas, we're allowed. Mmm, that is so good. This is so bad for you, but it is so nummy. This is dangerous, I'm gonna keep eating it. I need to get away from this bread for real. Honestly, I impressed myself a little bit just now. Cause I took a recipe I did not know and I changed it and updated it and made adjustments and stuff. And now, I will make this probably every Christmas for the rest of my Next life. up, we have the Impossible Meat Wellington. This one I kind of made up as I went. So I ended up using two sheets of puff pastry, one red onion, one medium egg, about 10 grams of baby spinach, three tablespoons of breadcrumbs, 16 ounces of chestnut mushroom, one tablespoon red wine, a tablespoon of black pepper, and four cloves of minced garlic, a tablespoon and a half of olive oil, eight ounces of Impossible Meat, one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of tarragon, and salt and seasonal salt to taste. Preheat the oven to 300. 175 degrees. Start by turning your stove to medium heat and adding a little bit of olive oil. Toss in your red onion and allow them to cook and caramelize with a little bit of salt. You're going to leave them in there for about 15 to 20 minutes, stirring moderately. The longer you caramelize, the better, but if you're in a rush, 15 minutes should do the trick. Just go ahead and add your balsamic vinegar and then let that cook until it dries out. Once it's dried out, go ahead and transfer it to a bowl and let it cool. 
in a new pan or in the old pan cleaned, go ahead and add your butter and all of your mushrooms. Let them cook down until they're soft, and then go ahead and add your four cloves of garlic and tarragon. This is also optional, but I highly recommend adding a little salted red cooking wine to the mushrooms. It makes it super yummy. Once they're cooked thoroughly, put them off to the side with the red onions and begin in another pan. In this pan, you're going to toss a little bit of olive oil and your spinach in. Cook that down until it wilts, and then go ahead and drain it of as much juice as you possibly can. I just put mine in a colander and pressed it. This spinach can't get enough love. Go ahead and chop it up as tiny as you can get it and then throw it in with the rest of the mixture. Next, add your breadcrumbs, salt and pepper to taste and blend and mix as thoroughly as you possibly can. In another bowl, add your pound of impossible meat, season all salt, salt, and pepper. I would say season this just a little bit less than you would normally season your burger, however that would be comfortable for you. Mix both bowls together thoroughly and that's gonna make the inside of your wellington. Whip out that puff pastry and get it off the paper. This took way longer than it looks like it did in the video, but go ahead and lay that flat and pour your impossible meat mixture directly in the middle and then mold it into the shape of a tube or a loaf, kind of like you see me here doing on the screen. Lay your second puff pastry on top and then tuck that meatloaf in for bed. Cut off any excess amounts of dough and then take a fork and press against the edges in order to close and seal your wellington. Any excess dough you had around the edges, you're actually going to take that in order to create your design. You can decorate your wellington however you want. I decided to just roll little straps and make crosses across it, but you can add flowers and roses and daisies galore if you've got those, those dough rolling skills. I don't. Next, quickly beat an egg and cover the entire wellington in egg wash. If you don't have a brush, that's okay. You can always use a paper towel. An important thing to remember is to make sure that you punch a couple holes in your wellington so that your crust doesn't break. I chose to make my holes a part of my decorative style. Then I popped it in the oven for 30 minutes and it came out like this. I'm so nervous to cut this open. Like, I hope I let it cook long enough. I hope she's pretty on the inside. Like, she's so beautiful on the outside. I'm so scared, I don't wanna cut her. I love her so much. <laughs> okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. We're cutting her open. Oh, it's so like perfectly golden brown and cooked well on the outside. Woo, the true test of a Wellington. What that, what that inside do though? All right, here we go. I'm so nervous. She looking nice! Yeah! Oh, shit! Oh my god, I'm so proud of myself right now. Round of applause for presentation. 100,000 out of 10. The dough, the puff pastry, your girl out here doing intricate designs, pushing holes and stuff. Like, that took so much strength to get through. Cause I was so tired. This is my third meal of the day, like making them and not even being able to eat them till now. Guys, this is my first beef wellington and I'm so, so, so proud of myself right now because I made it with the puzzle meat. I made the recipe up as I was going. Like, like I really did that. The true test, it can be as beautiful as it wanna be, but if the flavor is then it does not count. She's dead. Let's go. I'm ready, I'm here for it. I'm just gonna dig in. Like screw it, who needs a plate? I'm a thug. Oh my God, it looks so good. Look at that bite, look at that. She's smoking hot, literally smoking. I'm so excited, why am I so excited? Calm down, all right. <clears throat> Here we go. I know it's gonna be good, but like, wow. You taste how long I caramelize the onions for. I am melted. That is truly immaculate. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you guys want to see more vegetarian meal options. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you guys want to see these. I think I'm going to start a TikTok that's like for food after this because I would love to make more food videos. So, yeah. I'll keep you guys posted on the TikTok and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.